Learning an instrument can feel like a very, very big project. And a particularly tricky part of that project is learning how to grow and make progress by yourself. Hi everyone, and welcome back to Bow and Arrow. I'm Nicolette, I'm a violinist, fiddler, and teacher, bringing you practice strategies, tips, and tutorials for beginner violinists. In this video, we're gonna be talking about how to create a violin practice plan that works for you. You probably have to do a lot of work on your own without a teacher, and that is if you have a teacher. I remember when I was in college, the concept of studying still seemed kind of weird to me. I didn't really know what I was doing, and I didn't know how to divide my time up, and I didn't know what my priorities should be. I remember thinking, why didn't anybody ever teach me how to do this? So that's what I really want to encourage in my students. I really want to show everybody how they can go about making a strategic practice plan that works for them, that's sustainable, that helps them to grow and make progress on their own. How do you divide your time up? What are your priorities? How do you rehearse and test your comprehension of something so that you know that you've really completed the assignment. Before we get into the list, don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. If you're a beginner of the violin and you need more tips for a particular element of your playing, leave me a suggestion in the comment section. The first thing that I really wanna get my students clear on is their inspiration for playing. If you wanna play this instrument well into the future, you wanna have a sustainable and fun practice regimen that will build into your life well so that you can keep it up. You wanna set the tone for your learning experience and you should be enjoying your time, right? I mean, this is something that you chose to do. You picked this instrument over all other instruments. If you're here after having completed those first few days of struggling with the instrument, you probably have a reason for wanting to learn it in the first place. Hopefully that inspiration takes the form of a song or an artist or a style of music. I really suggest that you keep a journal and you track the things that inspire you to play. Start keeping track of these things so that you can rely on them when you need to inspire yourself and jog that sense of inspiration, that sense of excitement about your instrument later on when you might not feel so inspired. Remember, this can be a particular song, an artist, a whole genre of music. Maybe it's related to a film score. Maybe it's related to a video game. Something that really triggers that necessity nostalgia factor. At least for me, I know it really triggers me to want to pick up my instrument and play for a little while. Playlists are also really great for jogging inspiration. I'm a huge fan of old time bluegrass and country music, and I have lots of music saved into playlists that will help me to kind of hear at least what I really like about that music and what I really like about my particular style um, of practice and the tunes that I'm working on. If I'm ever working on a particular piece of music, I know that I have to have that in several different recorded forms so that I can go back and listen to it and really absorb it before I get into my practice session. If you're not listening to the piece of music that you're working on, you're really missing out. There are so many great players, there's so many great recordings of things out there. This is a great way to take advantage of technology that we have at our fingertips. I didn't have YouTube when I was growing up. I didn't have Spotify. Now I don't have to go out and shop to find the music that I really, really need in order to feel that inspiration. If you have an idea about what you want out of your instrument and your education experience, it's gonna make your life easier and it's gonna make your teacher's life a lot easier too. You'll have something to work toward. And if you have something measurable that is a goal that you can set for yourself, the timeline for you to get there becomes all the more clear. Don't let the standard way that most people go about learning dictate how you yourself are going to learn how to play. If you want something specific, that's great you should go for that. And you should find ways to remind yourself when it gets kind of muddy and messy and there's lots of technical issues along the way. It's a really long road to learning an instrument and I think it's great to have ways to mark your own satisfaction in your progress. So if there's something that can give you that excitement and that enthusiasm for just a moment while you're in the middle of working on something technical or dry or frustrating, that's beautiful. And that's something that you should constantly be giving yourself when you're in your practice. Okay, my next tip is to set some goals. Using the things that you are inspired by is the best way to derive your goals. I recommend to my students to think about their goals in terms of a few different things. Start with a piece of music that you really wanna learn. Maybe this is something you've always dreamed of playing and a teacher can really help you to identify whether or not it's a great 
starting point or if it's something that you should set as a goal for a few months away, maybe a year from now. The other idea is to start with a skill set that you want to develop. Maybe you want to improvise. Maybe you want to learn how to do vibrato. Maybe you want to play in an orchestra. You need to learn how to read music. That's a great skill set to then put in a goal. You can also start with a weakness in your playing. Really be honest with yourself about what you like or dislike about your own playing. If it's something that affects whether or not you want to practice, that's a great place to start. Maybe you don't love your sound. Maybe you don't love your intonation. Maybe you play out of tune a little bit too much for your own liking. That's the kind of thing that eventually you start to feel like, I don't really want to pick up my instrument and play anymore. So starting with that weakness can really be a boost to your enjoyment of your playing. Notice how a lot of the things that I'm listing are trying to help you enjoy the journey rather than the destination. That's the point. It really makes a huge difference if you are going to enjoy practicing. You're going to do it all the time. Overall, all of these ideas, they come in small, medium, and large goals. So you don't want to set a goal for yourself and remind yourself of it every single day that you're still not performing at Carnegie Hall yet. When you're working with small, tangible goals, that gives you a little boost in your day. Think about sustainability, think about being kind to yourself and setting achievable goals and also long-term ones. Okay, so I put this on the list as well. And this is finding the right time to play for yourself. One thing is really true about this. There is no one size fits all practice session. You need to figure out how often you need to play for you, for your development and for the speed of your progress that makes you happy and satisfied. So it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter if you don't practice every single day. Practicing every day is very effective. I'm just saying that it might not be sustainable for everyone. And sustainability here for me is the key to success. Say you have a great effective practice routine for six months, but at the end of the six months, you're so burnt out that you quit. That's not success to me as a teacher. I don't want my students to quit. So I want to help maintain their practice regimen. I think the biggest thing that you can do for yourself here is to find something that you can keep up and a routine that's manageable for you and sustainable for you. 1% is better than 0%. If you pick it up every other day, if you pick it up three days a week and it's for five to 10 to 15 minutes and you're gradually ramping that up at a rate that is sustainable, that's a great way to get better. My last tip for creating a practice strategy that works and is sustainable and helpful is to record yourself playing. Recording your practice is so great for measuring your progress. And in the day and age of TikTok before and after photos and time lapses, we really, really love to see ourselves improve at something. And the good news is that if you start an instrument and you continue to play, there is an undeniable truth there. And that is that you will get better. And to see that progress happen in a video or through an audio recording is so gratifying and it's so helpful for motivation. You start to see your own progress in a timeline in a way that feels tangible and effective. Another thing about filming yourself that's really, really cool is to be able to see yourself from an outside perspective. If you can see your right arm bowing over the fingerboard in the video, maybe it'll teach you to just make that slight angle correction in your bow arm. So now I have a question for you guys, and that is what is your biggest inspiration for playing the violin? I wanna know what it is that got you started and what really drove you to pick this instrument over all others. If you wanna continue learning with me, pick up your free violin starter kit that I have linked below in the description. Let me know how I can help you in the future with a suggestion for a new video. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel for more tips and resources for violin beginners.